Here we'll learn about cell cycle control in human cells. Cell cycle regulation has been studied in a number of model organisms from yeast to sea urchins. We'll specifically study cell cycle checkpoints and cell cycle regulation via cyclin CDK activity. To begin, start a table. To note that cell cycle control includes checkpoints, which ensure that major events in the cell cycle occur at correct times. Cyclin and cyclin-dependent kinases, CDKs, which are intracellular proteins that fluctuate in activity and drive cells through the cycle. Now let's illustrate them both. We'll start with checkpoints. First draw a pie chart to represent the cell cycle. Demarcate the following periods in interphase. G1, S, and G2. Finally, demarcate the M phase, mitosis. We leave out its discrete phases for clarity. Now let's add the major checkpoints. Show that the cell must pass through the following. G1 checkpoint to enter the S phase, the S checkpoint to begin and complete the S phase, the G2 checkpoint to enter mitosis, the spindle assembly checkpoint in mitosis to enter anaphase. Let's learn how each of these checkpoints prevent errors in the cell cycle. Indicate that the G1 checkpoint is also called the restriction point. In yeast, this checkpoint is known as start. Show that the G1 checkpoint can direct the cell in one of two ways depending on whether growth factors are present. If they are, the cell progresses to the S phase. If they are not, the cell enters a quiescent phase called G0. Write that cells remain metabolically active in G0 but do not proliferate. In yeast cells, progression through the restriction point, the start, depends on the presence of nutrients, mating factors, and cell size. In animals, however, extracellular growth factors stimulate cell division. As a clinical correlation, denote that stomach cells rarely enter the quiescent phase because they have short lifespans and must divide continuously. On the other hand, red blood cells spend most of their time in the quiescent phase and do not divide frequently. Skin fibroblast cells divide more frequently than red blood cells, but they do not proliferate until extracellular signals such as injured tissue stimulate them to divide. Until then, they remain metabolically active in G0. Now let's return to the G1 checkpoint. Indicate that the G1 checkpoint is also a DNA damage checkpoint. If DNA is damaged at a DNA damage checkpoint, the cell cycle pauses for repair, an event known as cell cycle arrest, before entering the following phase, in this case, the S phase. Indicate that the S and G2 checkpoints are also DNA damage checkpoints. The S checkpoint checks for DNA damage before DNA replication begins. The G2 checkpoint checks for DNA damage before mitosis begins. Show that the S checkpoint monitors DNA throughout the replication process to prevent and repair errors. We draw the S checkpoint in the middle of the S phase because it acts throughout the duration of this phase, before, after, and during replication. Indicate that it also prevents reduplication of DNA. Show that the G2 checkpoint checks that DNA is fully replicated before the cell enters mitosis. Finally, indicate that the spindle assembly checkpoint makes sure that all chromosomes attach to the spindle and align on the metaphase plate so that each daughter cell receives a full set of chromosomes. Each of these checkpoints prevents errors by ensuring that later events in the cycle cannot begin until earlier events occur. Now that we've drawn the cell cycle's major checkpoints, let's illustrate the role of cyclin and cyclin-dependent kinases in cell cycle regulation. Draw a cyclin, which is a regulatory protein. Cyclin is a protein with no enzymatic activity. Show that it binds CDK, which is an enzyme. 
cyclin binds to CDK enzymes to activate them. Thus, CDK activity is cyclin dependent. Now draw a graph to illustrate cyclin and CDK activity during the cell cycle. Show that the x-axis represents multiple cell cycles, each of which comprises interphase and mitosis. Next indicate that the y-axis measures the concentration of cyclin in the cell during each of these periods of the cell cycle. Illustrate that cyclin concentrations rise gradually throughout interphase and peak during mitosis. Show that they drop to zero again at the onset of the following interphase. Cyclins are so named because their concentration varies cyclically throughout the cell cycle. Next draw the fluctuation in cyclin concentration for the next cycle. Now let's add CDK activity to our graph. First illustrate that CDK activity peaks whenever the cyclin concentration peaks. As cyclin concentration increases, the number of active cyclin CDK complexes increases. Now write that cyclin CDK complexes drive entry into mitosis. Finally, let's learn how cyclins activate CDKs. Return to our diagram of cyclin bound to CDK. First write that our cyclin CDK complex is inactive. The cyclin CDK complex must be phosphorylated at one site and dephosphorylated at two other sites in order to be active. Now draw another cyclin CDK complex. Show that one activating and two inhibitory phosphates bind to it. Use an arrow to show that protein kinases phosphorylate the complex. Indicate that this complex is also inactive. Next, use an arrow to show that protein phosphatases remove the two inhibitory phosphates. Then draw a cyclin CDK complex with only an activating phosphate on it. Label this cyclin CDK complex as active. Indicate that it promotes mitosis. Next, illustrate that proteasomes degrade cyclins at the end of mitosis. Let's remind ourselves that cyclin concentrations rise throughout interphase and fall rapidly at the end of mitosis. Write that active cyclin CDK complexes phosphorylate other proteins that function in cell cycle events. These events range from chromosome condensation during interphase to spindle formation during mitosis. Next, draw a CDK protein without cyclin and indicate that it is inactive. Then show that another phosphatase removes the final phosphate from the CDK protein. Finally, illustrate that another cyclin binds CDK and the cycle begins again. Many cyclins and CDK complexes exist, each coordinating different events in the cell cycle. We'll learn them elsewhere. This concludes our diagram.